Welcome to the 902 podcast, the official podcast of the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Captain John Vick, and I want to thank you for listening. This podcast will give you an inside look at LSO with topics and guests to discuss public safety issues impacting Lancaster County. Be sure to subscribe for highlights on news, cases, and the people working for you at LSO. You can also follow us across social media at LSO Nebraska on Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Welcome to the 902 podcast. We are in studio today. Um, again, we still have the, the sheriff still elk hunting, but that's that's what you get to do when you're the sheriff, right? I guess so. I haven't heard if he's gotten anything. I'm assuming not because I, I figured I'd probably get a picture if uh if uh, he it's, got one. It's not a no news is good news? No, no, no. I, they've been skunked a lot of years lately, so. Okay. Well, weather plays a big part in elk hunting, so. Yes. I never know. Well, speaking of speaking of hunting, um, a lot of us go hunting for, you know, wildlife, animals, and things like that. But there is a group of people here at the sheriff's office that actually go and hunt for uh, for people with warrants. And so we've got the Fugitive Task Force in the house today. Sergeant Hips is with us. Uh, oh. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing good. That was a good intro. Well, it, it, isn't like it. isn't there a uh, isn't there a quote about that? Well, there is. I'm pretty sure I used to have it pinned up on my desk. Like, it was an Ernest, Ernest, Ernest Hemingway, Hemingway quote. Yeah, about hunting for people. Yeah, that uh, that that you know once once you've once you've hunted people, that's like the hardest hardest animal to hunt. Yeah, something like that. Okay. I, if I remembered it, you guys would probably call me a nerd. So um, I, don't, I don't think we'll call well, you, you a nerd. Wouldn't, maybe, but. maybe <laughs> Ben would. But anyway, I, I, Ben comes with a disclaimer, so I, 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 I you know, what? I have not been uh, bleeped out or hardly cut. You know, here I, I behave myself on this podcast. It's mm-hmm. good. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm proud of you. Well, we really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. You were actually just out in the field um, and running a little bit behind because you were taking somebody to jail. Yes, got here a little bit late, uh, was out uh, in a transient camp uh, when I was supposed to be here. I was walking uh, back to our cars from about a half a mile up Salt Creek from uh, the North Menards. Okay. Well, that... So, uh, do you just go hunting there or was were you led there somehow? Well, first of all, I just want to point out that we were more successful than I guess the sheriff's been with elk so far because we did. As far as we, we know, we went out for one, came back with three. Okay. Um, okay. But yes, we uh, we had got some information from a uh, uh, from a informant that the individual we were looking for might be in the transient camp in that area. Interesting. So we'll hold that thought because we'll circle around to that. But before we before we go all things fugitive task force. Let's hear a little bit about you. Um, where where do you hail from, and how did you end up at the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office? Well, well, so I grew up in Burt County, Nebraska, uh, on a farm outside of a little town called Lyons, um, and I never really had never really been to Lincoln. Uh, maybe a few times over the years, if we ever needed anything, we were closer to Omaha. Went there. Uh, was not familiar with Lincoln. Uh, if you had asked me, um, you know probably six months before I started working here, point to Lancaster County on a map. I might not have known that Lincoln was in Lancaster County. Um, So anyway, uh, I grew up working construction, um, and my dad had a construction company. I had my own construction company after high school. Uh, Dabbled in a lot of different things, um, construction-related, I guess, uh, and that was kind of the direction that I was headed. Um, I let, uh, my wife's brother talk me into, um, starting my own trucking, one man trucking company. I bought a truck and was, uh, not the best financial decision that I ever made. Um, and somewhere in that process, I had this, uh, 18 wheeler Peterbilt truck tractor from Texas, uh, that was up here. I was living in Seward County at the time and I needed to get a VIN number inspected. Uh, we do that here in Lancaster County at a couple of, we do, uh, at a location out at, uh, was at 46th and uh, For, yeah, R. we just talked to Phil Lang last okay, week about yeah, it. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, anyway, in Seward County, um, sometimes the, if you call, they'll send a deputy out to your location or at least they would at that time. I think this was in 2011. 
Uh, so anyway, I called Seward County Sheriff's Office. I needed to get my uh, title and registration switched over from Texas to Nebraska. Um, a deputy from Seward County came out and inspected my VIN number, and uh, I had always had a little bit of interest in law enforcement. Uh, and so I was asking her about the job and, uh, my trucking business wasn't going so well. So I was in the market for other options. Um, and she mentioned that, uh, Lancaster County was hiring. And I said, Oh, where's that? She says, Oh, that's Lincoln. Thank you, Seward. Yes. Yeah. So I, being much more familiar at that time with Omaha, I was thinking if I ever went into law enforcement, I'd probably go to the Omaha police department. Uh, and I was actually thinking about applying the next time their openings came around, but I thought, you know what? I went on the website, uh, such as it was in mm-hmm. 2011 and looked at the, uh, what Lancaster County Sheriff's office had to offer. I was like, well, I grew up in a rural area. I might like, you know, being a deputy mm-hmm. pays pretty good. If nothing else, I'll just, uh, test for a practice. So, and the rest is history. Here I am. Wow. Can I, can I, can I tell an FTO story? Right now, oh, yeah, we did spend some time together, didn't we? We did, we did, and and I didn't know that you were so unf- you fooled me with being unfamiliar with Lancaster County. So somehow I must no. have let you skate on that geography exam. It was a struggle, I'll tell you what. So one dark night in rural Lancaster County, we get dispatched to a what what was thought to be maybe an anhydrous leak out at one of the co ops, and so we we pull up, and sure enough, there's. Something's hissing out at the out at the co-op. Is this then the meth epidemic of anhydrous thefts? Uh, you, you know that was on my radar. It's it's uh-huh. it's on the checklist of things that we need to think through. But right. um, but when we got there, it looked like somebody must have just left a valve partway open or something. I think it was in Raymond, wasn't it? I think so. And and so you know, my mind, I'm I'm kind of waiting to see what what he's going to do, and. I'm, I'm thinking this is this is bad. We're gonna have to call the fire department out here because I mean I have no idea what to do with anhydrous. <laughs> it sounds dangerous, <laughs> and uh, and so you just get out of the car, you go survey the scene. Oh, it looks like somebody left the valve open. You just walked up and shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> call was tailor made for me. Yeah, I'm I, telling you, I guess problem solved. <laughs> problem I, solved. I, I think you got a five that day for problem solving skills because. Yeah, like, uh, that, Being a farm that kid, did not off. even occur to me that that was possible that I could uh, do that. So, I remember all these all these calls and things situations that I'm un, you know unfamiliar with, and I I've been working in construction and on farms since I was a kid. So by then I'm I'm pretty familiar with how to handle these kinds of problems. But now I'm law enforcement. I'm like I don't know what I'm doing. It was <laughs> it was a tough time, and then uh-huh. finally something came. Around. I was like, oh, I know how to do this. Uh huh. I can I can shut off an anhydrous valve. That was the day we knew. Approach from the uh, the side away from the wind yep. and shut the valve off. That Easy. was the day we knew he was going to make it. So. <laughs> as long as I didn't have a bicycle tube on yeah, it and, no, no. and doing all that. So you, you started here at the sheriff's office, and you've obviously done a few things um, Yeah, since so you started. I started in patrol like everybody else does. I think my uh, I went to third shift right after uh, FTO uh, and uh, with Sunday, Monday, Tuesday off. And then at the next bid, I was assigned as the contract deputy in Waverly uh, for six months. Um, I had one person under me in seniority, uh, and so my choices were Waverly and Hickman. And I figured I'd take Waverly because it had a highway, and maybe there'd be a little bit more traffic. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I spent six months in Waverly and then I worked second shift, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday off as a regular patrol car for uh, two and a half or three years. Uh, and then I was selected to go into the criminal division. Mm-hmm. Who made that mistake? Uh, I think that was former Captain Josh Clark. <laughs> um, but uh, If, you're, if up, you're listening, Josh, thanks, Josh. call in. We're, we're worried about you. Yeah. Check, check in. I, I will. Uh, that uh, And going into criminal really, um, I think, jump-started my career here. Um, it was a huge opportunity. Uh, it gave me a chance to do a lot of detail work and complex tasks that if you work in uniform patrol, you don't get to do all that often. Um, you may, you may sometimes, uh, write a search warrant or an arrest warrant. You might, 
you know, sometimes, you know, work a complex crime scene or investigate a sex assault or, a, you know, some other significant crime against persons, but not very, not really often enough to get really proficient at it, at mm-hmm. least not within a short period of time. And criminal helped me a ton, uh, with just learning how to work an investigation and, how to be a better cop. So it was a, it was a huge opportunity, especially that early in my career. And I think it really set me on a good path here. Um, yeah. And then you decided to take a test. Well, he became something else prior to that. Uh, let's see. I did a lot of, a lot of specialized uh, positions. The very first, uh, Ben, you were talking about meth. Mm -hmm. The very first specialized position that I got selected for was the, clan lab team. Oh, I That's forgot right. Now, this. you guys probably forgot that there was a clan lab team. Well, it, well, I tell you, when we first started having meth labs, we used to have to call Kansas City to have them come clean it, and we would sit there at the scene for three hours just yeah. waiting for them to come up. So, yeah, the clan lab, I and if, if anybody's we needed it. If anybody's wondering what I'm talking about, um, the manufacturer of methamphetamine uh, used to be a much bigger problem in Nebraska than it is now. Uh, now it's most methamphetamine is sourced from Mexico large labs and, in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, but, yeah, when they put the pseudo yes, un- under, under, under key, it really changed the game. And I think they can just make it so much cheaper in yes, and Mexico. Better. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we had a, we had a team, uh, that if there was a, a meth lab discovered, had some specialized training and specialized equipment to go out and be able to render that safe. There's a lot of, Toxic chemicals and, you know, potentially, you know, potential flammables and explosives and stuff that can be associated with meth labs. So that was the very first thing. Uh, I, by the time I started, pseudofedrin was already behind the counter. Uh, pseudofedrin, uh, the, the limited access to that made it a lot harder for people to make meth. And so it just, uh, it just, the meth labs were not anywhere near as common. Uh, so, but then, uh, my, uh, I think, 2015, um, I tested for and was selected as a, uh, a member of the tactical response unit. Uh, and that had always been, um, like one of my main goals and main, uh, uh, dreams here was to be part of a tactical team. Um, I even, uh, I think I even wrote a paper on it in school. Uh, and so yeah, I see you looking at me with a weird. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Whatever. I wanted to do it. Anyway, got selected uh, in I think the spring of 2015. Um, I've been a member of the tactical team ever since. Um, I worked as a crime scene tech uh, for a couple of years uh, on our joint CSI team with uh, uh, the Lincoln Police Department. And let's see, I was a field training officer. Uh, after my time in criminal, I went back to patrol for a couple of years, mm-hmm. field training officer. I got selected to go back uh, as a criminal investigator, I think in 2019 or 2020. Um, I went back in there and then I uh, tested for and was promoted to sergeant in December of uh, 2020. Okay. Well, that brings us kind of up to the present. Well, Except for your selection then into the position you're in now. Right. So I, uh, when I was promoted to Sergeant 2020, I worked in, uh, back in the patrol division, Mm -hmm. um, for, uh, well until November, almost, almost a year ago, uh, November of 2021, I think in uh, October, November, uh, I tested for and was selected for my current position as the supervisor of the, uh, Metro Fugitive Task Force. Well, that's a good spot for a quick break. When we come back, we will talk with Sergeant Hips about the Fugitive Task Force and everything that that unit has to offer for Lancaster County. Hey, I'm Captain John Vick with the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office. When it comes to your career, don't settle for good enough. Don't settle for ordinary. We won't either. Be different. Be better be exceptional. Start your future today at joinlso.com. And we are back with Sergeant Hips talking about the Metro Area Fugitive Task Force today. So 
for our listeners that don't know, what is the Fugitive Task Force and why do we have one? All right. So the Fugitive Task Force is a multi-agency group. Uh, by that, I mean that there's uh, its members are made up of uh, law enforcement officers from various different uh, agencies uh, around the uh, Lincoln Lancaster County area. Uh, currently, um, the task force has um, members that are uh, active and regular from uh, Lancaster County Sheriff's Office, of course, uh, mm-hmm. Nebraska State Patrol, Lincoln Police Department, uh, and the U.S. Marshal Service. Uh, we also have uh, part-time uh, members from uh, Saunders County that are here uh, quite regularly. Uh, there are um, also uh, task force officers in several surrounding counties. I think uh, Saline County, um, maybe uh, Jefferson County as well, um, that are not uh, going out with us every day, but that we can uh, call on if we need. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the task force part of it. Um, the task force primary responsibility is to serve felony arrest warrants. Um, Every day uh, we get a list of uh, warrants that comes down from the Lancaster County courts uh, because the U S marshals are kind of our federal partners in this. We also serve uh, a lot of uh, arrest warrants uh, from the federal courts and uh, we serve arrest warrants for other states, uh, other jurisdictions, uh, other federal uh, districts outside of Nebraska when the fugitive is believed to be located within uh, the District of Nebraska. Um, so that's kind of what the that's kind of what the task force is and what it does. Now you're associated up with the Omaha task force too, correct? Uh, yes. So our connection there is the U S marshal service. Um, the sheriff's office hosts the, uh, the Metro fugitive task force here. Uh, that's why we provide the, uh, the supervisor for it, mm-hmm. uh, which is me. Uh, but we, yes, we're connected with and work with work regularly with, uh, the fugitive task force in Omaha as well. Um, and they are same thing, multi-agencies, uh, from the Omaha Metro area, uh, that are all part of their warrant task force there. And, and that's not something that's just unique to Lincoln and Omaha. Um, these task forces are really They're all over the country. Yeah. I mean, in, in uh, most, most major metro areas and, yes. and probably some, maybe not so major. Yes. So, uh, yeah, there's there, this is the way that the, so the U S marshals are the branch of the federal government that's uh, kind of tasked with the uh the federal prisons uh warrants and court security um for the federal government and the way that they facilitate serving warrants around the country is is that they create or help fund uh or provide equipment to they try to get these task force groups started Mm -hmm. Uh, and yes they're all over the country um, so each person who is a task force member, uh, has to go through a, uh, a process to be deputized as a special deputy U S marshal with a limited, uh, uh, limited deputization, they call it. So basically, um, we can serve warrants, uh, that didn't originate, uh, in Lancaster County court and are outside where the, and the person is outside of Lancaster County. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so, so that they can assist us and we can assist them. Yes. Well, it helps protect you too. So when you do go out and go to Grand Island right. or Council Bluffs or wherever that you have the arrest powers on. Yes. Them. Yep. They, they basically are giving us federal arrest powers. Right. Um, and, and so for people that are listening at home that may or may not know, serving an arrest warrant is a very polite way of saying, we're going to come and find you and arrest you and take you to jail. Yes. Right. Um, People can get arrest warrants from a lot of different avenues, uh, but an arrest, essentially, uh, you get an arrest warrant when a judge, whether that judge be a county judge, uh, a district court judge, or a federal judge, Mm -hmm. decides that uh, you shall be arrested and go to jail. And the judge signs a document that commands law enforcement to take you into custody. Shall arrest. Yes. So... Law enforcement, when you have a warrant for your arrest, uh, law enforcement doesn't have any choice in the matter. If we contact you, we shall arrest you by law. 
Uh, and so arrest warrant carries a lot of, uh, it carries, a, it carries a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. it's a powerful document. That and it also gets you into their primary residence. If you can, you believe the individual is there and has the warrant and, and, uh, you do not need a search warrant at that time. The arrest warrant is enough to enter the residence. And sometimes I don't think the bad guys understand that part of it. I so, think that happens quite a bit where there's a lack of, there's a lack of understanding there. Question from the audience here. Yes. Are we sending the fugitive task force out on every, you know, unpaid parking ticket and, and traffic violation warrant that, uh, that we have? No, uh, unfortunately we don't have nearly enough people to take care of all those. Uh, no. Uh, so the, uh, the fugitive task force, we primarily only, we primarily only serve felony warrants. Mm-hmm. Um, and we concentrate our efforts only on, uh, warrants of that are either connected to a crime of violence uh or the person is a violent person they're uh they're on a continuing crime spree we have we have to prioritize our warrant there's a lot of warrants Mm -hmm. uh coming out of the lancaster county court we have uh and we have limited resources so we have to we have to concentrate our efforts on making sure that we're serving the most serious warrants on the most serious offenders. Right. That doesn't mean that we won't end up arresting a lot of misdemeanor warrants just uh, by the fact that they happen to be in the same place uh, at the same time as someone else we were looking for. Or believe it or not, people who have uh, dangerous felony warrants also have misdemeanor warrants too. Yes, mm-hmm. that, that seems to be the case quite quite frequently. Yes. So walk us back a little bit, Ben. When did when did this process start at the sheriff's office? Uh, early two thousands. I, I want to say two thousand and seven, off the top of my head. Um, so the marshal service came to us and asked, "Hey, do we want to start this?" And they had two marshals at that time, mm-hmm. Randy and Allen, and we ended up supplying one deputy to this. What we learned real quick is them having only three created an issue when they. Uh, surrounded a residence and had somebody inside. So our criminal unit kind of became the the rescue, the marshals uh, group. So a lot of times we would be doing other things mm-hmm. and uh, the alarm would go off that, hey, they have somebody and they're pretty violent and they need help. And the criminal team would uh, go out there and it soon found out that that was becoming too disruptive. Yeah. There just aren't many three sided houses in Lancaster County. No, there's, there's not. And uh, believe it or not, uh, three sided houses and having enough to go into the house or hit the door or do what needs to be done to clear it. So that's when we started reaching out. Uh, We did eventually have a two man from the sheriff's office. That's when we added the uh, sergeant and then the deputy reached out to the Lincoln Police Department and got the, uh, uh, them to volunteer, one of them to come and work with us at that time. And, uh, again, the marshal service, they used to have more people come out. But, again, with like all of us, um, manpower and what their primary juris- job is is protecting the courts so they can only send out so many. And that's finally the marshal service allowed part-time right. uh, uh, individuals to become part of the task force. And that's when Saunders – or uh, Celine and some of those uh, jumped on Saunders and them jumped on board Mm -hmm. to become part of it because the big thing with a lot of these warrants is if you let the bad guy believe he has a chance he could escape or or fight, they're more likely. But when they look out and they see seven, eight cops and they're in their tactical gear, their desire drops thinking, you know what, I'm caught. Mm -hmm. And the likelihood of them coming out and giving up increases. It doesn't, yeah, it just having, you know, sometimes people think, oh, you got this many people. Well, it's there for a reason. It's for the safety, for the citizens, for the officers, and even for the suspect. So, I mean, speaking of numbers, I mean, you guys, um, you guys are out most days um, sure. out out looking for people. What are what are some of the numbers, you know, as far as arrests that you guys are making in a given year? So it uh, it does uh, ebb and flow. It seems like. Um, but in 2022, uh, the uh, task force here in Lincoln uh, served uh, a little over 500 uh, felony arrest warrants. We're at a little over 400 uh, year to date. Um, and then we, uh, so far this year, we've also served 154 uh, new misdemeanor warrants. 
Uh, and we also arrest uh, people on what we call probable cause arrest. So it's not infrequent when we're arresting someone for an arrest warrant to discover another crime, mm-hmm. uh, whether that be drug possession, firearms possession, protection order violations. Um, we assisted the Lincoln Police Department on arresting a guy uh, for a felony warrant the other day, and there was a uh, there was a, a sex assault involved with that uh, that that wasn't part of the warrant. Um, so, uh, so and uh, and a lot of uh, uh, sex offenders also uh, mm-hmm. sex offender uh, registration act violations uh, on people. So, uh, so far, uh, we're up to about 150 uh, new felony arrests uh, for this year um, on those cases where we've uncovered something else mm-hmm. in the process of serving an arrest warrant. Yeah, you, they, you know, the one thing really want people to know is what the task force was really made to do is help the citizens and protect the citizens of Lincoln Lancaster County from being victimized of crimes because there's only a certain number of people that are out doing most of the crimes. Yes. Right. And either the task force goes out, either gets them arrested, they leave town and go someplace away and not committing crimes here, or they go underground so much that they're so scared to go out that they stay inside and aren't committing crimes. And we eventually catch those uh, people too. But another thing, when you're talking about getting leads in. We also give leads out when we believe we found somebody in a different jurisdiction that has a warrant from our, from us. Yes, so that's part of uh, that's one of the great things about having this uh, this federal partnership is that we're a phone call away if we find out that someone who has a, a felony arrest warrant uh, for you know say a firearms possession or uh, or sexual assault or you know pick your crime mm-hmm. uh, and that they are in you know, some other jurisdiction there in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, we're a phone call away from being able to talk to our, our counterparts in a fugitive task force in Atlanta, Georgia, to go out and look for and get that person arrested. Um, it, it makes it very difficult, uh, for, um, for people to hide from their arrest warrants. Just makes it a longer, longer reach of the law for us. Yes. And to, um, talk a little bit more about what uh, Chief Houchin was just saying about the, and it's not just the fugitive task force, but when you look at law enforcement, you see the people who are out in the, in the uniforms and the marked cars driving around, taking calls for service, enforcing traffic laws, working mm-hmm. car accidents, all the things that people normally associate with just regular everyday law enforcement. And there's investigators and detectives that are, you know, primarily, you know, working complex cases at their desk in the office. But then there's there's groups such as the Fugitive Task Force, and here in Lincoln, where there's there's others. There's the there's the Lincoln Police Department gang unit. There's the Lincoln Lancaster County Narcotics Task Force, where you have investigators that are very familiar with the usual suspects. Um, like was pointed out, there's it's a small percentage of people, and once you've done this for long enough, you have a you kind of you interact with the same people a lot of times. Uh, And these groups that are driving around in unmarked cars, paying close attention to kind of the bigger players in the, you know, in the criminal world. And it's a huge crime suppression tool. Uh, All these specialized units, uh, it really does, people know about it. I mean, well, the thing is, is like you go to some bigger cities and even Omaha, you'll have open drug sales going on in front of everybody and and, um, in the public and people see it. But you don't have that here. You don't see that. You know, they're very, you know, secretive about what they're doing. They'll go inside houses. Um, They're very careful because they are concerned that there are law enforcement officers out there watching them and. Some of the people that end up trying to do that get busted, and it's just uh, a good thing on that because it really does make the community community safer. Because, like you right. point out, people do one of three things: they either get arrested, they leave town, or they go into hiding. And in in any of those three circumstances, it's hard to keep committing crimes in Lancaster mm-hmm. County if you fall into one of those categories. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and. Uh, I think you guys and the gang unit and the narcotics is one of the bigger reasons why this community is one of the safest in the United States. And uh, 
I know that, you know, Lincoln likes to try to keep that small town and you guys are uh, being able to keep it like that. Now, like we've always known, once the city gets over 300,000, and I think we've talked about that, crime starts to go up and um, they become the big city issues that they come. And we're getting closer to that, but I'm just thankful you guys are out doing your thing all the time and uh, um, keeping Lincoln a, a great place to live in Lancaster County, of course. You guys are certainly very proficient and professional at what you do and, and have obviously the stats to back it up. Um, very active. I mean, over, over a felony arrest per day, essentially for the right. calendar year, but you can't do that all by yourself. Um, you guys get a lot of tips from the public. So yes, if it, if it wasn't for public participation in what we're doing, uh, we, it would cut our, our effectiveness down a huge amount. And, uh, I, I think you're probably getting ready to talk about Lancaster Lookout. Is that right? I'm glad you mentioned it. Tell tell us how people can can get in touch with your team um, if uh, if they have information or want to learn more. All right. So just in case you you know happen to have that you know I don't know person in your life that uh, you looked at the Lancaster County warrant list uh, and you saw that they had a felony warrant and it's time. We to go to jail. We'd love to talk to them. We'd we'd love to help. We'd love to help them get that trip to jail. Uh, and uh, you can uh, provide information to us. Uh, we keep the information that you provide anonymous. Uh, there's several ways that you can provide that information. Uh, you can uh, you can go through uh, Crime Stoppers. I think there was a podcast episode about Crime Stoppers. Yep. Yeah, air code 402-475-3600. There you go. There we go. Number memorized. Uh, and uh, you can also go uh, to the Sheriff's Office public webpage. Uh, and if you scroll down the, f- the first screen that you come to, there's a yellow icon, a uh, row of yellow icons, actually, and one of those is Lancaster Lookout. Uh, if you click on that, uh, you'll see a list that we try to maintain of uh, some of the some of the people that we're actively looking for. Uh, some of them have pictures. If you see someone that you recognize, there's a link there with an email. And even if it's not, if there's if the person isn't on the list, but you know that they have a warrant, click on that, click on that link, send us an email. It'll make it to uh, me or one of the other guys. Uh, and uh, any information that you can put in uh, to that. The more details, the better. We'll keep your name out of it. Uh, our goal is just to uh, get them safely arrested and uh, off the streets so they can take care of the, what they need to with the courts. And recently we made it even easier for folks. Um, if, if they have trouble finding our website, um, trouble navigating our website, all you have to go to now is www.lancasterlookout.com, and it will take you directly to that page and uh, you can view the at the at least for the moment the top 10 most wanted um, fugitives in Lancaster County but also some of those other links that Sergeant Hips was talking about to uh, to get in touch with the task force that does sound really easy I think Ben could probably even do that you know yes I, I think I could probably manage that part of it I, I keep wondering who you know who we were getting all those clicks on our website but most of them maybe are you I don't know no there's probably some of the greatest information comes from ex-spouses, ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends who mm-hmm. um, are a little bit upset and know that the their uh, ex-partner has a warrant and that, and uh, they're more than happy to uh, let us know where they are. Can you also, Mike, talk a, bit, a little bit about confidential informants and their uh, work with you? Now, I, I know we have to be a little bit careful on, on how in-depth we go on this, but this is just another way that we start to get good information. Right. So... Um, we get information from a lot of different places, and uh, if if you have a friend or a uh, or a family member who has a serious felony warrant, there's a chance that we might end up at your house, uh, knocking on your door and asking you some questions. Um, there's and and we get a lot of information that way. And one of the one of the great things because all we're doing is arresting someone on a warrant, uh, we typically don't have to uh, we don't have to write we don't have to write your name down in an official you know, an official court document, an official law enforcement report. Uh, so people can be, uh, can be confident that their, that their name or that we got information from them is not going to get back to the person that we're looking for. Um, taking that a step further, we do have, and we do utilize official confidential informants. And those are, uh, people who maybe, maybe they want to work off charges, 
Uh, they have they've been charged with a you know, usually a, 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 a more minor crime, um, and they you know want to uh, enter into a, uh, a prosecution deal with the county attorney's office to maybe you know work some of that off by uh, uh, performing some good deeds for the community to make up for their bad deeds. And some of those good deeds might be giving information on uh, the location of a wanted fugitive or maybe uh, other criminal activity, drug activity. Um, and then others, uh, other people get paid for it. Um, mm-hmm. they, you know, we have, uh, we have funds and people who provide information can uh, work for money. So, uh, yeah, CIs are motivated in different ways yes. all the time. And you just, that's the one thing that was fun working with them is you just needed to figure out what was their motivation and kind of go from there on that, you know, and we also get information from family that are just plain concerned about the individual and the lifestyle they're living and they mm-hmm thinking, you know what, jail's going to be better than where they are. On the streets, yeah. I think, uh, uh, honestly, that is what I see the most. I bet. Um, People, you know, uh, people are out committing crimes or doing bad things, but a lot of times, uh, you know, the story, there's a lot more to the story than that, you know, then, you know, there's a lot of things that happen in people's lives that kind of, that kind of drive them to do the bad things that they do. And that's not an excuse, Mm -hmm. but... uh, a lot of times there's somebody out there that, you know, there's a, there's an ex, there's an ex out there who's mad at them and wants them to go to jail, but there's also a friend or a family member who just wants them to get help. Uh, and addiction, addiction yeah. drives a lot of, uh, a lot of crime. Um, I, I think that you could trace almost any, any crime that any of us sitting in this room have gone to work to either drugs or alcohol addiction mm-hmm. somewhere, uh, back in that person's past, uh, and well, the thing is, is, you know, a lot of people think these, the drugs, you know, just being in possession of it's a victimless crime, but they don't understand is you know, where are these people getting their money and how are they um, feeding their There's right, addiction? Feeding their Second habit. and third order effects to all of it. All absolutely. of it. Yes. Yeah. And so there is a lot of times where people just want to see their family member get help. And you know what? I do, too. Uh, I want to see their, you know, their family member get help. And a lot of times the first step to beating that addiction is spending some time in jail to get clean. Mm-hmm. Well, I I think you summed it up very well, you know, by just talking about the crime suppression element of this. And, and for whatever the reason is that somebody ends up in that situation, it, it's very hard for them to keep perpetrating crimes in Lancaster County when you and your team are out there looking for them. Right. And uh, so we just very much appreciate all of the work that, uh, that you and your unit do uh, day in and day out to keep Lancaster County a safe place to live, work, and play. Well, thanks. And uh, for anybody out there listening, if you have information that uh, we might find useful, uh, go to Lancaster Lookout, contact the Sheriff's Office, contact the Lincoln Police Department. It'll make it to us. Thanks, everybody, for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode and you want to listen to more episodes, be sure to follow us on uh, any of the podcast platforms where you enjoy listening to podcasts. We're on Spotify. Apple, Google, Amazon, everywhere in between. And be sure to check out joinlso.com if you're interested in career opportunities at the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office. And like we talked specifically on today's episode, head over to lancasterlookout.com for a checkup on the most wanted fugitives in Lancaster County. Or if you want to provide information or get in touch with the Fugitive Task Force, there's information on there as well. You can find us on social media at LSO Nebraska on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And if you have any other questions or want to reach out to us on email, LSO at Lancaster.ne.gov. Thanks for listening.